So, is Affinity Photo worth your money in 2025? Now, my very short answer to that question is a big fat yes. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly why Affinity Photo is the best Photoshop alternative. My name is Renz and I've been teaching Affinity Photo for over five years. And I have helped tens of thousands of Affinity Photo users become more skilled in the software and create better photo art. Now, the first point that I got for you is that we're dealing with a perpetual life license so if we go to the affinity website and we scroll down a little bit you can see that there are no subscriptions so version 2 of the affinity apps are available to buy with a one-time payment this not only gets you the latest and greatest versions of affinity but you will also receive free updates until such a time version 3 is released they offer flexible licensing options, either pick and choose which apps you want or opt for the universal license and get the whole suite on all platforms for one low price. So if we scroll up a little bit, you see that Affinity has a version 2 universal license and this means that for one price you get all apps so affinity designer 2 affinity photo 2 and uh, affinity publisher 2 for windows mac and ipad so this is an insane amount of value compared to other subscription models let's say now if you get the affinity universal license there's an amazing thing that comes with it and that is basically my second point which is studio link so if we scroll down a little bit you can see that studio link is the most seamless workflow ever conceived in a creative suite so from within affinity publisher you can instantly access the advanced tool sets of affinity designer and affinity photo without ever leaving your layout thanks to the world first studio link technology no more app switching file format conversions or frustration is the biggest game changer to the creative workflow in years so let me quickly demonstrate this in affinity publisher i'm currently working on a document called the alchemy of self and let's say i want to apply some adjustments to my um, picture now i personally am way more proficient in affinity photo than in affinity publisher so what i can do is go to the top left corner and just click on my photo persona and now my whole layout actually changes to the uh, affinity photo uh, interface face let's say so i've got all my affinity photo tools here on the left side i've got my layers i've got my mask etc and this is exactly um, the way i like to work now let's say i want to add some illustration or whatever i can click on the design persona and you can see that the whole interface immediately changes i don't have to leave the software this seamlessly switches between apps which is just absolutely amazing and this brings me to my third point which is that they have a fully featured ipad app so if you get the universal license you can actually see that you also get um, all softwares on ipad os and this means that you can just open your projects on your ipad if you want to work while you're on the train or in the bus or whatever and you've got the full app there now the biggest difference between the desktop app and the ipad app is the layout and that is why i I haven't been using it a lot lately because if I want to work on a project I just use my laptop because this is what I'm familiar with but it's such a great thing to actually have now going to my next point is that the affinity apps aren't so bloated because serif is a way younger company than let's say let's say for instance adobe they have started building from scratch from what they have learned from let's say their competitors so we've got a nice little layout right here you can see it's nice and colorful there are no excessive features but they have just got the features that you need now obviously there are things that they want to improve for instance um, select subject and object selection tool but these things are actually coming in affinity photo 2.6 so they are still improving the software but they are just adding the things that we actually want so there are no plans as far as i know for any generative fill things um, there is no uh, 3d timeline etc etc but if we want to work with photos we basically have everything we have now is everything perfect obviously not for instance the raw developer in affinity photo is called the develop persona and i think it's way less developed actually than for instance the camera raw filter in photoshop or lightroom but these are obviously things that they can improve over time and once again we're not paying a subscription 
option we're just paying a one-time price for the full suite now my fifth point why i absolutely love affinity and why i think it's worth your money is that they are working with non-destructive layers so for instance in photoshop you have to turn everything into a smart object to work non-destructive this is not the case in affinity photo so for instance if i rasterize my background layer right now I can just scale this thing up and down without a problem, without losing quality, without whatever. It just works the way it's supposed to work. Now, also one amazing thing, which could be a separate point, um, is that they have live filters. Meaning that if I create a live filter, I don't have to create a smart object. I can just create a live filter with how, whatever I want and these live filters are non-destructive meaning that i can just click and drag this live filter around i can remove it i can do whatever i want with it and i can delete it so the live filters are a separate layer they aren't let's say ingrained into your smart object meaning that they work non-destructive now this brings me to my sixth point why i think affinity photo is worth your money and that is the inbuilt layer masks for adjustment layers and live filters so let me actually demonstrate this so let's actually create a curves adjustment layer and we're gonna go quite extreme we're gonna bump up the shadows let's say so we're gonna brighten up the shadows and we maybe want to keep our highlights about the same so we're basically just brightening our darks let's say now let's say we only want this to be applied to the background now what i can do is select my curves adjustment layer and you can see that if i grab my brush tool with a black foreground color i can just brush out the effect wherever i don't want it let's say so right now you can see that it, this effect only applies to the background and this was super easy to do so i've actually just created this very simple mask in order for the effect to, to be only applied to the background now you can also do this the opposite way around so let me uh, press command uh, z a couple of times to undo let's say um well let's actually create another uh, curves adjustment layer and this time we're gonna dark the shadows and we're gonna bump up the highlights to increase contrast and Obviously, I'm doing this a little extreme to um, drive home the point, let's say. Now, let's say I want to paint in the effect. What I would do is simply with my curves adjustment layer selected, press command I. So I invert the layer mask and now I can brush in with white and now i can do basically the same thing so i'm brushing in with white and i'm only brushing the effect wherever i want it to be so this also works for live filters so actually we're gonna hide this layer for now and let's say we're gonna create a gaussian blur layer just for a demonstration so i'm gonna increase the blur a whole lot now let's say i want to blur the background even more then the foreground what i can do is two ways i can either let's say brush out with black the effect from the foreground like this or what we can do is invert the layer mask and make sure we've got white as a foreground color with the brush and we're gonna brush out the um, effect from the background let's say so this is the before and this is the after and that is a very quick demonstration on how you can use these built-in masks now let's actually delete these two layers and let's go to my seventh point which is live previews and this is absolutely a game changer so let's say i'm gonna um, hide my flames for now and the glow etc and let's say i want to create a new flame so i'm gonna create a new pixel layer and i'm gonna go to my brushes let's say i'm gonna use my fire brushes so this is the iron rancy fire brush pack and you can see that if i just hover over my document you can see exactly where my brush is going to be. And if I think it's annoying that I have this weird outline, I can press caps lock on my brush. And now you can see that the outline remove, um, disappears. And now you can see if I hold my mouse still, you can see we only have like a cross cursor. So I've got cap lock, caps lock activated right now. And if I move my brush, I can only see the outline, which is perfect because now I can exactly place my brush where I want it to be so let me actually click right now and this is live brush preview now they've got more live previews as well so if we go to our blend modes you can just hover over the blend modes and you can just pick any blend mode that you think looks best and i think this is super powerful because now you don't have to learn let's say what the blend modes do you don't have to click on it you can just hover over the blend modes and it will actually live show you what it actually gonna look like
Now, obviously, this preview works with other brushes as well. So, for instance, um, we've got cloud brushes right here, and you can see we've got a nice live preview. Then, of course, we got maybe some smoke brushes if we want to add some smoke to our flames or fire. Um, these are super high quality, and I've actually made all of these brushes myself. If we want to play more with some particles, we can actually uh, add particles within just a click, and we can color all of these brushes using layer effects, let's say. Now, these brushes and 200 more are currently available in the old ultimate creator bundle and it includes over 200 amazing custom brushes from light brushes, firework brushes, nature brushes, night brushes, water brushes, electric brushes, fire brushes, cloud brushes, particle brushes, special brushes, and smoke brushes. But because it's Christmas, I've added some more brushes for you, which is my best selling fur brushes, which are the best brushes to actually make crystal clear fur selections. I've also in included my scribble brush pack and my tape brushes. I've included 50 high quality assets that you can drag and drop onto your canvas without wasting a whole lot of time uh, on selecting and masking and I've in even included four fonts that I handmade myself and that is all part of the ultimate creator bundle now the best part of this bundle is that it actually comes with a full tutorial library so you can actually get the most out of the bundle and you actually get to know how to use each and every single one of these brushes to basically create whatever you can imagine in affinity photo now currently we're running a huge christmas sale so the brush bundle is uh, 68 percent off which means it is only 50 so once again you get over 200 custom made brushes you get 50 amazing high quality assets you get four amazing fonts and then you get a super big tutorial library which will actually show you exactly how you can get the most out of them so if you're interested in this amazing brush bundle click the link down below i hope you enjoyed this video and i love to see you in my next one